Right, finally back making videos again. It's been a, an interesting couple of weeks. Um, as you saw, I'd put a post out saying that my uh, my cat blesser had scratched my eyeball, and um, I needed like a wink to uh, to recover from that. And then after that, having to play catch up on work as well because I just genuinely couldn't see. Uh, it was pretty horrifying actually, um, having my eye like literally glue itself shut and it was so tight trying to repair itself and heal that it was like forcing my other eye to like close as well and I was like practically walking around blind. So it was impossible to make any sort of video during that time. Um, so yeah, I just had to play the very sensible thing and relax. But I am at least back now. I have also spent the weekend working with a client who did really, really well. He ended up uh, reaching out to me to focus not just with his anxiety, but we did the filming service that I was offering. And, um, and yeah, it was just phenomenal just how great uh, his results were, considering it was his first time um, actually doing it as well. But this is actually where this video is going to come into play here because I was thinking about how the weekend went for him. So he did in total about 13, 14 approaches and, and from that he got two phone numbers and nearly got a date on the Saturday, on the same day that he uh, he got the number uh, of one of the women. And uh, yeah, it was just unfortunate that, that it didn't play out. But I got myself thinking about the actual process that a beginner would essentially go through if they wanted to go out and do cold approaching on their own. So I've actually kind of written like a step by step here. I've kind of got got 10 steps um, that any beginner can go through if they're going to be starting doing cold approach, uh, especially if they are someone who's got social anxiety. So that if that is someone such as yourself or maybe you know someone else that you are going out and practicing cold approaching with, then I think this is going to be a fantastic guide for you. Just being able to understand the incremental steps that you can take until you get a bit more comfortable and confident with actually having a conversation with a complete stranger because reality wise this is a very uh, I think surreal experience really for men um, you know you get a lot of promotional stuff or there's a lot of content online that I think kind of gives the impression to guys that you know what you go out for one weekend it will just solve all your problems and then you're going to be absolutely amazing with your confidence and with your social skills and stuff and um, you know that, that's definitely not really the case you know if you've got a guy who's just very unsociable or he's not very confident he doesn't believe in himself that much either and perhaps maybe even the environment that he's in just doesn't see him having a lot of conversations with people then you are most certainly going to be rusty when you start off and it just means then you have to kind of go at a slightly slower pace than maybe what other people do but that doesn't mean that you're in a bad place or that you are a bad person it just means you've got to put that extra little bit of effort in if you want to get yourself to the same place that everyone else is at and then when you get to that point you suddenly realize that everyone else is on that same plateau and then they probably also need to go to a dating coach or whoever for help. So uh, enough of me kind of ranting. I'm, I know I'm, I'm sort of peach, uh, preaching, <laughs> preaching, preaching to the choir is what I was trying to say there. So I'll go through each of these steps and I want to just walk you through why it's you know a really good idea to kind of do each one first before you move on to the next one. So if you're first of all thinking about going out to do cold approach, the first thing that you want to consider is setting yourself a time limit. So I think it's just a really good idea to already have in mind this limitation of, look, I'm, I'm a really nervous guy. I only want to go out for half an hour or an hour, whatever it may be. Maybe you're someone who wants to dedicate like a whole weekend or a week to doing it. If maybe you're having a sabbatical experience from work, then that's absolutely fine. But I think... It is really good to just have in mind, 
I'm only gonna be going out from this time till this time, and then after that, I am switching off. You know, there's no point trying to force yourself, especially in a very anxious situation, to try and do something longer than what you feel comfortable for. And I've spoken about the concept of like the rubber band effect in other videos. I think it was in my comfort zone video actually. And it's a very real experience that, you know, if you stretch yourself too far and too quickly, you are literally going to repel back and you're gonna come back even further than what you wanted to before. So if you well and truly scare yourself, petrify yourself or whatever by going out and just trying to be in public or even consider talking to people, but you're not even comfortable with the idea of going out yet, then you're only gonna probably make yourself agoraphobic and you're gonna wanna come back home, stay indoors and put yourself off of the idea of just going out completely. So be realistic and set a time limit or set yourself a time goal for how long you want to go out for. If you're really, really nervous, start with like 15, 20 minutes. Be like, right, I'm gonna go out for this amount of time and then I will come back home or I will come back to the office or whatever. But just give yourself a time limit. Whatever your circumstances, I won't be able to tell you what's gonna be the perfect time for you. You'll know. You'll be, you'll, if you're sitting there, even like maybe writing on your phone as like a, as a statement for yourself in like your messages or in your notepad, I'm going to go out on the street for X amount of time. You'll know what's appropriate for you. And it's okay if it's low as well, because you're going to be building it up, which is something else to consider. So if you set yourself a time limit of 10 minutes, then of course, as time goes on, you're going to need to move that to 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour to an hour, because it's going to be impossible otherwise. And you'll put too much pressure on yourself to actually try and give someone a compliment or ask for directions much later on down the line. So that's my first point. Just first of all, decide on a time limit for how long you want to go out on the street for. Now the second one is getting comfortable with the idea of being out the house and in public. So it's the actual act of being out of the house. So once you've set your time limit, make it a mission, to leave your house. Now, believe it or not, for some guys that I have met over the years, this is actually a very difficult thing to do because they are agoraphobic or they're just so comfortable being indoors that it has created a very safe uh, environment and space for them that they just don't want to leave it. And the reality is, is unfortunately, you have to overcome that hurdle. And we're not talking about even at this stage, you have to talk to anyone, but just get yourself out of the house for the time limit that you have set for yourself. Baby steps, okay? So if you're maybe living outside of, uh, of, let's say, uh, London or just a busy city, then make it a mission to at least travel into the city. Obviously, if your time limit kind of allows that, otherwise just walk around your local area. Even if it's walking around the block, just get yourself comfortable with being outside, okay? Now, number three is kind of uh, a slight expansion on that, where I want you then to actually set yourself a route. Set yourself a starting point and set yourself an end point. So again, we're not talking about the idea of having conversations with people. We're talking about you set a time limit, you're getting out of the house, and also you're setting a place that you're going to start walking from and a place that you're going to end walking from. And I think somewhere like London, for example, just has so many great routes that you can walk through because, I mean, there's just a ridiculous amount of landmarks. You've got obviously very touristy areas. You've got very sort of industrial shopping-like areas. You know, you've got people walking fast, walking slow, crowded, not so crowded. Uh, You've got the river and things to see as well as there's like museums and galleries and stuff. You know, set yourself a route. Go from one place to another in the time limit that you have set, whatever that may be. And if you are, again, very socially anxious, just starting with them is just a great, 
great thing to do because at least you're getting used to being around just a lot of people. Uh, I think even the noise as well tends to be a big one that people don't tend to be very comfortable with. Uh, I know even like for myself, like I like to put my headphones on and sort of switch off and listen to music or podcasts and stuff. But you know what, if you are looking to work on your cold approach, you need to be really more aware of your environment. And that's where at least if you're out of the house and you haven't got headphones on to drown out the noise, that can make all the difference between, you know, not really facing your fears to actually getting your your physical symptoms of anxiety um, at more at bay. So definitely consider that, that if you're going out and about and you're setting your route to places, try not to listen to music, try not to drown out um, any of the voice and stuff. Now the next step, so step number four, I've put control your breathing. And this was something that I definitely did a little bit with my client when we were out. Uh, not not too much of an emphasis because he was um, he did really really well talking to people, but just being able to take like deep breaths can help calm you, and it also just preps you getting into that meditative state for when you do go and talk to people. If you don't at least get those physical symptoms under control, then what tends to happen, especially on the breathing side, when you get to the point that you start talking to people, you'll find that suddenly the anxiety spikes and then you talk really, really quickly. And that was something that did actually happen with my client a couple of times, even when he was just asking for directions, that the anxiety quickly came back and um, and he spoke really quickly and then he ejected himself kind of quickly out of conversations as well. And actually by just getting into the habit of just slowing down, deep breaths, it meant that it just grounded him that bit more. And then when he was able to have a few more conversations, he got into that flow state much quicker than I think that he had expected. Okay, I just tweaked the light in there before it was starting to get a little too overexposed. Um, So point number five. So after you've controlled your breathing and you're coming out of the house and you're setting yourself routes and time limits and stuff, number five is I want you to then practice smiling holding eye contact and being more optimistic. So in a way, the first few steps actually kind of gives you permission to be really anxious and whatnot whilst being out in public. But as time goes on, you do need to show to people, especially if you're going to talk to them, that you're also an approachable person. And The only way to really do that is by, first of all, just getting comfortable taking control of your body language. So the eye contact, first of all. Now, very anxious people really, really struggle to hold eye contact. Now, I'm very comfortable holding my eye contact with the camera because I've just been doing it for so long and with working with so many clients and coaching them. But for guys, when they are going out on the street, they hate the idea of making eye contact with people. You know, there really is some truth in the idea of that when you hold eye contact with someone, you are peering into their soul, as well as you really can create such a deep connection with someone the moment you lock eyes with them. And that's a very scary thing for people who just aren't very... Maybe not even just being uh, confident outdoors, but if they're just not confident being around uh, attractive women, then you know it's very difficult to actually look at a woman in the eye uh, because you're kind of scared of whatever kind of connection that they might that might end up creating. So, on the aspect of holding eye contact, practice looking up and just holding eye, trying to hold eye contact with people for like one second, just keeping your head or chin up high, kind of head level. If that makes sense. Uh, sort of like just being able to keep your head uh, very level is, is really what I should say. Um, and holding eye contact with people, try and do it for one second, then for two seconds, and then for three seconds. And usually you'll find if you get past that, you've kind of got that welcome in to go and talk to someone anyway, which is where the next few steps will start coming in. But Holding eye contact, great. Even getting comfortable smiling with people, you'll find even a shift in your energy when you are just like, you've got a bit of a cheeky smile on your face and you're you're kind of like looking at people. 
uh, as well. And you'll feel more opt optimistic, uh, which is a byproduct of both of those two combined. But even telling yourself, like trying to overwrite whatever limiting beliefs you got by saying like, you know what? I'm going to have a good day or it's going to be a really good session. I'm, I'm looking forward to trying to look at people or smile at people or I can't wait to go from where I get to at this station all the way to the museum, you know, or even being really enthusiastic about things that maybe you want to do in London or even wherever you are going to go and travel, you know, have a, even a bit of a purpose with going out as well, which can add to the joy and excitement for actually leaving the house. If you have the mindset of like, oh, I really don't want to go and, and this and that, then you're going to just fight whatever motivation you're going to give yourself for leaving the house. So just bear that in mind. Give yourself a purpose when leaving the house. Like if you're going to maybe buy some clothes or go shopping or go to the gym or whatever, even that with the A to B could be a really, really good incentive to then uh, go out and think, right, I'm on my way to the gym. I can't wait, have a gym session. I'm really looking forward to my workout today. Or, you know, I can't wait to go shopping. I'm going to buy all of my favorite food. You know what? I might even treat myself to a particular chocolate bar that I don't always have. You know, now I know I'm kind of riffing here, but hopefully you at least get the point. Just try and learn to be more optimistic about your time going out. And you'll find as well that that will also take control over all of the symptoms that you get with being anxious. Now, not completely, but it will just help you feel a lot more comfortable with at least being out of the house before you do start talking to people. Number six. So this is kind of more of an optional one, uh, just to catch, yeah. So this is actually, yeah, more of an optional one to, to add on to point number five, which is that I then want you to start nodding at people. Or if you can be really brave, say good morning or hello, good afternoon, good evening as you're walking by people. And uh, I kind of got this particular step actually from uh, from friends that I've got from up north where northerners seem to be so much more open to like, like uh, being greeted or greeting people as they're walking by people, especially out either in the countryside or even in the city. When you hold eye contact with someone, it's almost kind of like a, uh, a very uh, gratuitous, I'm sure that's the right word, gratuitous thing to do, to just sort of nod and be like, morning, hey, how you doing? Good afternoon, you know, just that sort of thing. So not even to start a conversation, but just that kind of like opportunity to make a statement to someone and to receive a statement in a very, very positive way. So if you can do that as well, that's a great stepping stone if you're not yet ready to actually ask someone for directions or compliments and stuff. So, so it's just a good one to really consider if you find that that is still too big of a step. So asking for directions or compliments, take it down a notch, not at people, you know, notice them, um, acknowledge them. And they've got the hiccups. Like I'll acknowledge I've got the hiccups now as well. But um, but just acknowledge that someone is there. Greet them. And you'll find that it will be reciprocated as well. And that's just a great stepping stone. Which then actually leads on to point number seven. Asking for directions. That is such a great one. It's such a universal one that everyone could do because you're not really looking for a conversation when you're asking for directions you are literally just looking for someone to like point you for where you need to go and especially like in somewhere like London you've got almost like two ways to um, ask for directions you've got the actual genuine I'm lost I don't know where I'm going and then you've got the social freedom version of it where you could actually be standing by a train station and then be saying like that you are looking for that train station so you could be in Covent Garden going up to someone and saying 
uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm trying to look for Covent Garden Station, do you know where it is? And you could be just literally like standing right by it with the sign kind of like above you. And even that kind of like quirkiness can be a really great icebreaker for having a conversation with someone. But even that can still be a stepping stone. So asking for directions is a really, really great one. And of course, depending on how willing you want to be with the complexity of that question. So maybe you're in like Covent Garden, but you're asking for directions towards Regent Street. Then, you know, it means that someone might have to open their app, bring up Google Maps and stuff. And you might also have to justify why you're not using your phone and your Google Maps to actually discover those places. So it's just a nice, easy stepping stone for experiencing a very mild conversation, you know, and just seeing where that can go. And then once you do get comfortable with that, then point or step number eight is actually giving a compliment. So you could end up going up to someone asking for directions and then thanking them as well as then giving them a compliment and moving on, which is a really good step or taking the initiative after that to, if you see someone that you like on the street, to go over and give them a compliment. Now, the likelihood is you're gonna get a lot of anxiety during this particular phase, and that is absolutely okay. Embrace it. And if you find that you are experiencing too much anxiety, take it down a notch. Get yourself grounded, get yourself into that flow state where you will feel the this kind of like meditative like state then move those steps up again you don't have to constantly go upward sometimes you have to take two steps back to go three steps forward so it's absolutely fine there is no rush when you are doing this as well I should add so step number eight giving a compliment and I've actually put here that it's a part one because step number nine would be giving a compliment and then asking a question So in a way, you could actually do the reverse of asking for directions. So you could go up to someone, give them a compliment and say, you know what, I just had to say, I absolutely loved your style. Um, I'm also in need of a bit of help. I'm trying to look for this place to go to. Great, great way to try and transition a little bit into a conversation. Or, you know, you could go up to someone and give them a compliment and then if they say thank you or whatever, or maybe they give an explanation about their fashion sense, especially if maybe you ask them about that fashion sense, then they, it's going to give you an even bigger opportunity to ask a question. Actually, I kind of sort of said what I just should have said in in the wrong order there. So you could ask them, uh, give them a compliment and then ask them a question. So you could say, I absolutely love your style where did you get your coat from? Or, you know, or I absolutely love that um, European look that you have. Where are you from? Or I absolutely love how, in fact, actually one that my client did actually use that I gave him just to kind of get him to experience something a bit different that did turn into getting a phone number was he actually went up to one woman in uh, Piccadilly Circus and uh, he went up to her and said, excuse me, I I love how Italian you look. Are you Italian? Great one. And then she said that she was from California and, and it just, you know, and then the conversation opened up that way. So it's a really, really good stepping stone as well to just give a compliment and then ask a question that could be relevant to that compliment or that step up, transition it into a different topic that then you can ask the question about that will mean that you can then start talking about a very different topic. So the last step is practice active listening. So I bet you probably weren't expecting that one. So the best way to have any kind of conversation really is not to try and focus on what am I going to talk about? What questions am I going to say and stuff? It's one thing when you're looking to go and talk to someone and you want to make an observation about them. But when you're in a conversation with someone, you need to be listening to what they're saying rather than thinking about what you should say. And it then means that the conversation can just naturally flow. You'll just end up talking about very in the moment topics rather than going like, oh, I have to talk about X, Y, and Z if I'm going to build attraction. 
That's not how this works. Very authentic and honest conversations with people happen when you are talking about things that the other person is passionate about and have an interest in. So you have then opportunities to actually ask people questions, being curious or showing curiosity and actively listening to what they have to say and enjoying what they're sharing. And even then you can ask more questions about the things that they are sharing with you, which then leads to having an even bigger conversation. So those are my 10 steps, especially for any kind of beginner, if they're socially anxious or not, if they are getting started with doing cold approaching. So just reading through them again, just one last time. One, set yourself a time limit. Two, get comfortable being out the house and in public. Step three, get comfortable walking from point A to point B. So create a route for yourself. Step four, control your breathing. Step five, practice smiling, holding eye contact and being more optimistic. Step six, which is optional, which is incorporate nodding, saying hello, good morning, afternoon to people to acknowledge that they're there. Step seven is asking for directions. Step eight is giving a compliment, which I've put also as part one. And step nine, which would be part two, which would be giving a compliment and then asking for a question. And then lastly, step 10, which is practice active listening. So I'd love to hear how these work out for you, especially if you're going out to do some cold approaching, whether on your own or with a friend. Have a go at doing these steps. And I can assure you, it's a really great gauge to know where you're at with your social anxiety and you know how far you can go on your own, how many steps maybe you need to go back. So you know, like where's the minimal uh, step level that you're at where maybe then you do need help or guidance from someone else to actually help you go those steps forward and be comfortable with talking to people. Because I find like if you can't do these 10 steps, then there's no point worrying about trying to get phone numbers or go on dates or have full on conversations with women. You've got to get comfortable with these first. So if you are struggling or maybe you'd love to have that extra bit of help and support with getting going with your cold approaching, two of the services of mine that I would absolutely recommend. And I'm going to try and get my, my client to uh, to do a, a case study testimonial with me because I'd love for him to share his story. I was so proud of what he did. But first service that I offer is my filming where we will go out on the street. I will film you and then the next day I will sit with you, we will watch your uh, your approaches and I will give you feedback on things that you can do going forward. And then on top of that, I've also got my dating desensitization therapy where we go out for a week doing all sorts of social exercises to help you to become more desensitized um, to the idea of actually talking to people on the street and especially women that you're attracted to. So if you are interested in maybe checking both of those out, have a look at the videos on my YouTube channel or most definitely head to my website in the links in the description below. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. Like the video, subscribe if you can. All of these little things certainly help my channel to grow and reach more men and help men with their social anxiety with uh, certainly meeting women through cold approaching. So until the next video, thank you so much for watching.